Congestion strikes all of us. My daughter's yesterday, congestion, Vic Sinex nasal strike. Puppy out of there. Uh, good to have you in. A real big story. Uh, the biggest game of the NFL this weekend feels like to me the Cowboys and the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, if Dallas wins, they can they could potentially secure the number three seed over Chicago. What Dallas doesn't want to do in the playoffs is go to New Orleans. Every place else, Dallas is fine. With that defense and that running game and Amari Cooper, Dallas can win everywhere. They're not going to go to New Orleans, especially after they beat the Saints and beat them again. That's what Dallas doesn't want. So this game this weekend between Dallas and the Colts is huge. And the Colts are red hot. And by the way, the Colts are favored. So that tells you... The Indy's a real team at home playing great defense, and they have Andrew Luck. So the big story with the Cowboys is fairly obvious. We've talked about this. Dak's going to be a Cowboy. His intangibles are unbelievable, A+. plus. His talent's closer to C+. Plus. Sort of the opposite of Cam Newton, you know? Cam's got A-plus talent, but his intangibles are C+. Plus. He's moody, hot and cold. Anyway, with Dak, Dak's in, okay? Like him or not, Dak's in. Jerry likes him. What are you going to pay him? What do you got to pay him? You don't want to pay him $28 million. Okay, let me show you a chart. The most guaranteed money for quarterbacks in the NFL. Here's the top 16. One leads the division, now barely Big Ben. Of the top 15 quarterbacks in the NFL, most guaranteed money, none lead their division. Paying the quarterback a ton, it's not where Dallas wants to go. And Cowboy fans had to be throwing up in their mouth a little yesterday when Peter King came on the show and talked about Dak's contract. Now the question is, do you pay Dak Prescott $29 million a year? And, you know, at some point, at some point, Colin, if you're committing to a guy, you got to pay him the market rate for what quarterbacks make. And that seems totally absurd. I get it. But you may have to pay the going rate. $29 million a year. Again, top 15 paid guaranteed money quarterbacks in the NFL. None lead their division. You got to go to 16 and Big Ben, and he's hanging on by a threat over Baltimore. You can't blame Dak for expecting that, and he's technically earned it. Okay, so here's the key. This is a great negotiating ploy. I have seen companies do this. I've been in 12 contract negotiations in my life. So Trent Dilfer and Michael Irvin have both been on my show this week. So Trent Dilfer's theory on what to do with Dak is let's wait. Here it is. Well, we got another year to figure it out. I, I would personally uh, internally want to see him do something special on a playoff run. I still think you need to be having conversations with his agent right now saying, if you think you're going to break the bank, you're not going to. We'll start looking into the draft. We'll start looking at different um, options because we're not going to do it. Say the Vikings did. Because right now, when you overpay for a quarterback, you're affecting four to six other guys that should be getting rewarded for their efforts, and they're really not. That's very dangerous. Is Dallas playing well right now? Mm hmm. Is Dallas going to have a home playoff game? Mm hmm. Is Dallas going to win another division for the second time in three years? Mm hmm. Is most of this Cowboy team defense getting better, not older? Mm hmm. Waiting on Dak is not a good bet. Young people who have never made great money. It's very hard for them to pass on it. Rich old guys who have been in a million negotiations, who have a hundred million in the bank. Nah, I'll wait. I'll wait, bro. But Jerry Jones, remember, Dak still is on his rookie contract for another year, making, making 700 Gs. That's it. Jerry Jones comes to him and says, I'll make you a deal. You want a house that looks like mine, not your condo? I'll give you $23 million today. Or you can wait for a year and maybe get 28 Almost always, young people will take the money now. That's what Michael Irvin suggested two days ago on my show. It's just about, hey, you're the, you're the next guy up. You get to be the highest paid. It, it doesn't matter in any other, it, like it does in every other position. So now you got to go to Dak before he becomes up and give him somewhere, give him a great number that's good for both sides. 
I have watched companies for years go to employees and tantalize them with this. We'll pay you early. Now, 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 we won't give you the big number, but how would you like a mansion today and a boat today and a Lambo today and new suits today and de generational wealth today? Very hard to pass up. Be very careful about waiting on Dak because, A, Jerry's already made an, a call. We're keeping him. Jerry's already made that decision. And ask yourself, is that defense for the Cowboys old and getting worse? No, it's young and getting better. Are the Cowboys eroding as a franchise? No, they're growing as a franchise. Is Dak suddenly going to get worse over time? No, the chances are with more experience, he'll get better. Are pieces over the next 24 months, 12 months leaving? No, Amari Cooper, Zeke, Tyron Smith, Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, Demarcus Lawrence, they're all going to be here next year. I think you got to go to Dak early. I think you have to go to him and say, listen, I mean, Dak's admitted, didn't have a perfect life. Pay him 23 now, not 29 in a year. I think that's the negotiating ploy. I really think it, you wait on Dak. Look at this Cowboy team. They're going to host a playoff game. There's a very good chance they're hosting a playoff game. They could be hosting Minnesota. Who do you trust? Kirk Cousins prime time against the Cowboys defense? I'll take Dallas. Aaron Rodgers sneaks in on the road again. I'll take Dallas. The only team I don't like matching up with Dallas is New Orleans there. And if they win this weekend, Chicago's got a tough game against Green Bay. They don't have to go there. I just be very careful about waiting to pay Dak. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. All right, we've got a little bit of news, Colin. The Eagles will likely be taking the field on Sunday without Carson Wentz, according to a report from NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. Wentz is dealing with a back issue and is not expected to play this weekend. Yeah, why risk it? Yeah, well, according to him, the news could get worse for Eagles fans because given the team's current standing in the playoff race, a loss for the weekend could spur the team to sit Wentz for the rest of the season in yeah. order to get healthy for next year. So I think it's that okay. means mm. they have the Rams this weekend, obviously, then the Texans, and finally um, at Washington. So, by the way, that was one of my blazing five picks Rams minus nine. Uh, Philadelphia's season's done. Well, much like Atlanta, you can tell when certain teams kind of pack it in emotionally. I think Philadelphia, with Wentz or not, was going to get smoked this weekend. It's a completely different feeling than last yep. year, him getting injured last year. They were rolling. Yep. They had uh, energy. They were inspired. And that was, seemed like a big blow. And then Foles came in and did what he needed to do. Yeah, we've seen this story. It was called Andrew Luck. They just decided last year. Remember, they kept playing the media. Uh, he's going to practice. He doesn't practice. And all of a sudden, Joy, we looked up and went, oh, the season's over. Just get him off the field. Get him healthy. It's a lost season. It happens to great athletes. He's Michael got a Jordan, lot Tom. Of injuries. Yeah, no, 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 no. One more, and he's he injury prone. Wrist. No, no. 2015, what? hairline rib fracture, 2016. Yeah. Torn ACL last year, and now he's having back issues. No, no, no. He he is. He's got. Same with Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck has another injury. And you start thinking about drafting another quarterback. Carson Wentz comes back, he's fine. But if Carson midseason next year gets another injury, you got to think about drafting another quarterback. Quite the, uh, well, obviously not something you planned on, but this 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 Eagle season coming off of last year is just yeah colossal disappointment. Yesterday, the city of Oakland filed a lawsuit in federal court calling the Raiders' impending move to Las Vegas illegal and demanding compensation for hundreds of millions of dollars in losses. <sighs> Speaking to ESPN, uh, owner Mark Davis didn't have much to say. In fact, he only spared two words. He called the lawsuit, lawsuit meritless and malicious. My feeling is we're three and ten. We're still relevant. It's a legal issue. I'll let the attorneys make any further comments. Right. Now, the issue here is... <laughs> where do they play? Where do they play? They don't have a place to play <laughs> next year. So they're moving to Vegas in 2020. The Las Vegas Stadium is not going to be ready. What about Santa Clara where the Niners play? Just Well, that's one option. There's some... There's some issues there as well. San Diego is an option, if you can believe that. Good hell. Um, Reno and Glendale, Arizona. So, I'm telling you. Who, so literally, we have no idea where the Raiders Joy, are going to play next they year. Moved, the Chargers moved, the Rams moved, and the Raiders moved. And two of the three are absolute messes. I'll say it again. San Diego was the best place for the Chargers. Yeah. Oakland's the best place for the Raiders. 
Now, L.A. was a better spot than St. Louis just because the market's so big you need a team. But two of these three moves for the NFL have been a mess. Thank God.